Decades before he was hailed a war hero or served as the 26th president of the United States, Theodore Roosevelt visited a state that stole his heart. The stories are recited to this day of Teddy's time in North Dakota, whether it's from the national park that bears his name or the stage. Rough Riders, charge! Or heck, just from the guy himself. Well, first I'm wondering, can I refer to you as Teddy, Theodore, Mr. President? Which My friends call me Colonel. Please Colonel. do so. Colonel. Right. It's Colonel. A real pleasure. You've got the grip of a rough rider, too. Are you a horse woman? Colonel can often be spotted walking the streets of Medora when he's not sharing his memories to an audience each afternoon. Imagine how the cowboys and ranchers of the Dakota Territory regarded me when I got off that Northern Pacific train. I was not of their kind. I actually carried and read books, had and used a toothbrush. I had silver cowboy spurs, a silver cowboy belt buckle, and a silver hunting knife, jeweled at Tiffany and Company. My glasses were some sort of sign of a moral defect in a man's character. They called me storm windows and four eyes. The year was 1883. Roosevelt was 30 years old. The boy who grew up in Manhattan with poor health and asthma made his way west to breathe easier and to hunt bison. But before I returned to New York that fall of 1883, I invested in the free range cattle ranch business. My first operation was the Chimney Butte Ranch. Uh, all North Dakotans know the uh, famous Maltese Cross Ranch House, which is now at the Visitor Center to Theodore Roosevelt National Park. This was one of his ranch homes when he was here in Dakota Territory in the 1880s. Well, he still decided to build that first bison hunt didn't go so well for Roosevelt. And really, everybody thought he would give up. There were almost no bison left already by the 1880s, and Roosevelt understood that and knew that, but he was on a quest to bring home a trophy, one of the last bison in Dakota Territory. And although everybody thought he would quit, and it rained and the weather was miserable and his guys were exhausted, on, after 10 days, he finally bagged his trophy bison bull. After that hunt, he didn't expect to return to North Dakota so soon, but tragedy back home had him looking to heal. That telegram sent me for the train, on the train down the Hudson Valley, racing to my family home in the middle of the night, when my brother Elliot answered the door with these words. He said, there is a curse upon this house. Mother is dying, and your wife is too. His wife and his mother both passed away on the same day at his home in New York City. On the day that his wife and mother passed away, which was Valentine's Day, 1884, Roosevelt um, who was an extensive journal writer and, you know, always long journal entries. But that day, when they passed away, he wrote just a big X and the words, the light has gone out of my life. And so when he was ready to return to his ranch, he came here kind of to escape and get away and to grieve. Um, and this place helped him do that. He could kind of focus his energy on the strenuous life of living on the ranch, and that's what helped heal him. Uh, tragedies happen in each and every one of our lives. I came here, and in uh, riding across these buttes and through these coolies, I, I think I proved the uh, wisdom of the old saw that there's nothing so good for the inside of a man or a woman as the outside of a horse. For the next few years, Roosevelt split his time between the East Coast and living the life of a cowboy. His Maltese Cross cabin stood out as the mansion of the cabins for that time. Roosevelt's cabin was divided into rooms, uh, which was a big luxury. Other cabins were probably just one room. You were a pretty fancy New Yorker, <laughs> Colonel, but you were a cowboy at heart. Well, I am known as the nation's first cowboy president, but of course when I arrived here, I wasn't a legitimate cowboy yet, but I earned the respect of the cowboys by working alongside them, and as I told the people of Fargo in 1910, I would have never been president, but for my experiences in North Dakota. We are reminded often of the century in which we now live and how much has changed, which is how we must end our time with Colonel, with some sound advice, perhaps needed now more than ever. But what do you make of <laughs> politics today? Uh, well, it reminds me of what my cousin said when I was first elected to the New York General Assembly uh, in 1880. Uh, uh, politics, uh, from the Greek, uh, poly meaning many, and ticks being blood-sucking insects. Uh, uh, but in all seriousness, the highest office in the land is not president, it's citizen. And so I would ask you and each and every one of your viewers to do their duty as good citizens uh, and to uh, not just vote, 
but to participate in making their home community a better place each and every day. Life to the Max is brought to you by Life Touch, photography for a lifetime.